in the Good Things studio. I have with me Valdelia Native, who also attends school in Natchez, Mississippi, Bryce Gothlin. He's featured on American Idol. He's a musician, singer, songwriter. He does it all at the age of? 17. <sighs> Another one of you overachievers who make all <laughs> of us feel like we just didn't do enough in our in our high school years. No, I think this is a great story. So welcome. Yes, ma'am. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So we were chatting, and you got kicked off with, like, your music interest. At what age? Uh, Well, about two years old, I started messing around with singing. You know, just... What is a two-year-old? How do you mess around with singing well, at two years uh, old? My dad was a, uh, a singer of a band for, like, 40 years. So, you know, just listening to him and watching him. You know, every little kid's going to watch their parents and want to do whatever they do. So I guess that was kind of what it was. And then... uh. You know, as I grew older, kind of got serious about it and try to realize I really like doing it. So I was like, maybe I should try to make a career out of it. And how long has you have you been playing the guitar? Uh, about two and a half years. So that's kind of newer. So yes, you've ma'am. been singing a little bit longer than you've been playing the guitar. Well, I think both are working yes, out for you. you. So when did you first start watching American Idol? Uh, my mom had been watching it, you know, ever since I was little. Um, I wouldn't really like steady watching it like one of those like obsessive things. But, uh, you know, I just look at it and see like, oh, I really like that guy or uh, that girl who was singing. Uh, you know, like how they sound and everything, and uh, kind of got interested in it when Lane Hardy went on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because seeing somebody from Louisiana went up there, which is where I'm from, Louisiana, um, it was really inspiring to see him go up there and just win the whole thing. So um, after that, you know, it just kind of kind of stuck in my head. Well, you know, it's crazy. I'm sitting here doing math, which is always a scary thing to do on the radio. But Bryce is 17, right? And he's on the 20th season of American Idol, which means American Idol wow. started <laughs> when you and I, or maybe I, graduated high school, about yeah. the time we graduated high school. I'm sitting here going, man, I feel old. <laughs> wow. American, I- he, so American you, Idol's been around longer than him. Longer than, longer than he has. And I think that, you know, American Idol's one of those shows that really started something new in terms of entertainment, giving folks uh, the opportunity, like you, Bryce, and so mm-hmm. many others, just to get a fast track of putting their talents in front of a bazillion people, right? And the obviously the entertainment idea comes from it that some, you know, get laughed at, made fun of. Others yes, obviously have a learning um, opportunity. But prior to auditioning for American Idol, what's the largest stage that you had, you know, sung on or played your played your guitar on? Uh, probably like a local local event or like a local uh, bar or auditorium. I've been playing with a, a band. Um, my bandmate's named Tyler Gregg. He's a guitar player. Um, I've been playing with him for about six years, and that was around the time when we started the band, when I started getting serious about singing. Um, we've been playing around for you know, six or six or so years. and uh, just, you know, Again, I'm doing the math. That means you're getting serious about <laughs> singing in a band around like 10, 11 years old. So you got lucky, Bryce, I guess, to have parents, at least your dad, kind of understand yes, you know, your passion because I have a nine-year-old now, and if she came to me, and said she was going to get serious about singing, it would do everything but not laugh at her um, <laughs> in, in, in that way. So how did you balance all that out when you first decided, hey, this is this may be something I'd like to, you know, hone in my skills and see where I could go with it? It wasn't hard to balance out in the beginning. You know, it was just like an every weekend thing, just performing in front of like a small crowd or, or so. But um, as I got, you know, with American Idol stuff, it really became hard to balance uh, you know, sometimes it lags behind certain things like school or I play football, so that'll lag behind or, you know, but I, I try to keep the music at the forefront of everything. Okay, so going back to your audition, you auditioned and made it to Hollywood Week for yes, season 20, but I read where you had auditioned, your first time auditioning was for season 19. Mm-hmm. If that, So what encouraged you or inspired you even to go for the first for the first round? Uh, well, I, I really didn't even think about it. My mom signed me th- twice. She signed me up for it. Like she Well, th- the first time she signed me up about a day before. Uh, well, she signed me up earlier, but she told me about it a day, a day, a day before. And, um, you know, I just went and do it. I, went, I just went and did it. Uh, I did Simple Man by Leonard Skinner, which was really, it's all about song selection. And this is 2019. Yes, ma'am. This is a, that's, that's an important thing. I mean, song. or season 19. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's an important thing in song selection. I feel like that song really didn't show off my vocals um, as well as it should have. Um, I was still kind of young. I didn't really know what I was wanting to do with my career as far as music. Uh, so it was just like a throw it out there thing and um after that you know i kind of realized maybe i should try to improve myself so i can you know took in some of that yeah. constructive criticism yeah, right some of the constructive criticism they gave me in the virtual audition well you can always tell anybody who is willing to step in front of someone and put themselves out there however it may be with their art 
if you receive feedback, you've got one or two options. You can either <laughs> run and hide and change your career <laughs> completely, yeah. or you can wrestle with it and try to, you know, take it as an opportunity to to grow and get better. So obviously you did. For those of us at home watching American Idol and shows such as that, we only see a snippet of the audition, right? You finally mm-hmm. made it in front of the big three, at least yes, there right. at American Idol, which is now Katy Perry, Luke, uh, John, Luke Bryant, and, and Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. And um, so, but how many? What's the stages of getting there? So they have uh, three virtual auditions. Uh, the first time I did it, I didn't make it through the first one. Uh, the second time I did it, I made it through the first uh, the first virtual audition. Then they sent me to another one, and I thought I, th- I was like, oh well, I guess I'll just do another vol- audition another day. But they're like, no, we're sending it to you right now. It was over Zoom, and I, I was like, oh okay, so I guess I'll just get ready for it. And then they uh, sent me to the next one, and then they were like, we're going to send you to another one. So they sent me to another one. It took all about two hours. Oh, know, wow. So you went through yeah. all three in yes, like, okay, quick. In like a span of two hours. And then after that, they were like, we're going to send you to Austin to audition in front of the three judges. And uh, that was just crazy. Uh, it was so emotional. But uh, I'll never forget that day that they sent me to Austin. So that was October of 21. Yes, ma'am. And then the season now didn't even come out until 2022. Mm-hmm. Right, so walk us through that that opportunity. Was it, you know, you obviously had been practicing, or, you know, because on TV they show you all waiting in line and they make mm-hmm. the big, you know, dramatic idea of it. Was it like that? Were you in a holding cell? Holding cell? Were, you, yeah. were you in a locker? Um, were, I mean, were you all out there with the other contestants with your little number on? How does that work? Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, we were all really in like some hotel kind of place and uh you sit in the holder room all day well not well they'll pull you for interviews and uh digital media stuff they'll pull you for different kind of things but really you just it's a lot of waiting and uh they only show a fraction of the time you're waiting in the holding room because they have off room holding and they have on camera holding or off camera holding and on camera holding so you'll only spend about 30 minutes in on camera and like seven hours in off camera wow. holding I can only imagine what that sort of nerves is like when you're yeah. stepping up because you know your auditions now are being recorded because they don't know who or or I'm sure they have an idea of who's good and who's not. I'm sure there's more to it than that. But is it scarier, Bryce, to still step in front of the three celebrities that you've probably listened to their music, influenced you in some capacity over your mere 17 years? Um, I guess your 15 year career since you started it, too. And, or knowing that the little red light came on and there's going to be millions of eyes that could potentially see. Uh, well, I was I was really I was I was as nervous as I, I wasn't as nervous as I, as I thought I was going to be going in front of the three of them because I kind of viewed it as you know they're just three people like me. They're just a lot more famous than I am. But they're just three people like me. And most I, people <laughs> wouldn't think that yeah. standing in front of Katy Perry and Lionel that's Richie. Katie Perry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of the mindset I had to have because if I was too nervous, I would have broken down and wouldn't have been able to play. So I had to, you know, kind of view it as Which a, you see sometimes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Which I, I think that happened. Because some people I saw were very good musicians and I thought were way better than I was and didn't make it through. I think that's what happened. They kind of broke down once they went in there and their nerve got to them. So I think you, it's all about mentally preparing yourself for that kind of thing. Because if you break down in front of them, you're just going to not be able to perform. You mentioned song choice was is a lot of it. You hear that a lot yes, too ma'am. when you when you watch these shows. You chose Simple Man when you went for season nineteen. What song did you choose for season twenty? Uh, Born on the Bayou by CCR. It's a higher pitch song and it really shows off my vocals a lot more. It gives me more range to work with. So I felt like that really is what uh, put, put me through is that song. How long did they give you to sing your your song? Uh, or how, I guess how long of the song do you get to I sing? Think a, I think about a minute and a half. I, I sang a verse and a chorus, and that was it. And that was it. Yes, ma'am. It, well, actually, I sang two songs. I sang an original I wrote, and because they wanted they they were really uh, pestering me about uh, you know I wasn't really being an original enough, and I was they said I was trying to mimic somebody, so they wanted me to sing an original so it would sound more like me. So you had and you one. just happened to have one in your pocket. Yes, ma'am. So what did you pull out of your pocket? Um, it's a song that I wrote called the Miss Lou. Uh, it's about uh, I live in a uh, Natchez. I mean, I live in Vidalia, and uh. It's kind of there's a bridge that separates Natchez and Vidalia, which is Mississippi and Louisiana. And I wrote it about those two sides. The first verse is about the Natchez side. The second verse is about the Vidalia side. And it's like that. And it obviously was enough to get you through to the next round. Well, we've got yes, more ma'am. with Bryce McLaughlin coming up next here on Good Things. 
Good Things wants to remind you that there are some great things to do in Mississippi, plenty of events, unique places to visit. So go to visitmississippi.org to find out more. You can watch Super Talk Mississippi on your computer or your mobile device. You can watch it on Roku, Amazon Fire TV devices, even YouTube. So now you can watch Super Talk TV. We are live on C Spire TV on Channel 70 right next to the Weather Channel. Or you can go to supertalk.fm slash connect to find out more. And if you're there, you'll see I'm not alone. We're continuing our conversation with Bryce McLaughlin. He is a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a musician. And he had his time on season 20 of American Idol. And we were getting to the whole part, Bryce, where you were standing in front of Luke Perry, Kate, uh, Luke Bryant, Katy Perry, and Lionel Richie. Okay, so you did your song. You did your two songs because you did a uh, standard song and then you did your, your own. What happened next? Who said, who gave you the thumbs up, thumbs down first? So they were uh, kind of like, well, we weren't expecting that, I guess, when I started singing. Because, you know, just looking at me, my voice is really raspy. I guess they just weren't expecting uh, my voice to be as raspy as it was, just a 17-year-old kid. Um, but um, they were kind of, you know, back and forth about it. And they were kind of like, uh, we, um, we're not sure. Th- th- that was really what it was. It was kind of like, we're not sure. But um they were really just focusing about me being original and being myself because I guess they uh, thought I was trying to mimic somebody whenever I sang my uh, first song. And then after that, uh, Luke Bryan said, I'm a yes. And uh, then Katy Perry goes, I think it's undercooked. And then she goes, but I like sushi. So she made a little joke, and then she gave me a yes. And uh, Lionel Richie gave me a no, but I kind of understood where he was coming from. Um, he gave me some constructive criticism about, you know, trying to find myself and make my voice my own. So you got your ticket. Yes, ma'am. And then you had to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> so how long did you have to keep it a secret? Because this is October twenty of twenty one. And then when did the show air? Oh, well, I had to keep it a sec. I had to keep it a secret until the show. Uh, I could tell people that I had went and auditioned, but I couldn't say uh, the result of the audition. So I had to wait till the twenty seventh. Or well, I actually, you didn't tell nobody. Uh, your mom knew because yes, she took ma'am. you, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> See, uh, I, I told a few people. I'm kidding. But I, I tried to keep it as under wraps as I could. But uh, actually, it was longer than that because I had to wait for all the five weeks of the audition because I didn't know when I was going to be on it. So I had to wait through all the audition episodes before I could say anything. And then what happened next? Um, and now then, it's cats out of the bag. Yeah. You're on the show. Well, after my first audition, um, I got signed by a company in Nashville called PCG. Can uh, they do that? Development. There's like, Can they come in and get you before you? I guess. They, that's what they, they did. did. They got they you. Got, they got me. So, um, uh, yeah, I got signed by PCG. It's run by a guy named Mr. Bernard Porter. They have offices in L.A., uh, Austin, Texas, and Los An- or Nashville, which is kind of a coincidence because that's where the three cities were for the auditions on American Idol. But, um, yeah, they uh, right after the uh, first audition, they got me a vocal coach, uh, social media guy, and then they got me a songwriting coach. And, I mean, it was just work, 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 work. They were working with me, trying to get me better for that Hollywood week, and uh, they really helped me. And uh, you could tell... Um, my voice had uh, improved since the first audition to Hollywood Week. Uh, Miss Jennifer McGill, my vocal coach, um, really helped me improve on every aspect of my vocal. Uh, my songwriting coach, Mr. Britton Cameron, has helped me write two songs already. It's supposed to come out um, on Spotify on May 20th. Is uh, Right now is what we're set on. And then uh, Mr. Will Muse um, has helped me with my social media stuff. Uh, really just uh, growing my following and uh, getting me out there. And then Mr. Bernard, obviously, I mean, he's the the head honcho of the whole thing, but he has uh, treated everything with the utmost professionality and just really shown me how the business is run because it's not on, not only you have to be a good musician, you have to know how to work your uh, business, and he can do all of it because he's a great guitar player, great great. It's everything. good to hear, though, that when you find the contestants on um, these type of shows, they at least get some kind of help along the way, yes, right? Because it's like, oh, you made it through, and then – you do recognize, and I think the voice is a little bit more open with their actual coaching of their contestants through. It's part of their, you know, dialogue or, or part of their um, what they show on TV. And you're like, okay, you can watch someone go from amateur good to now like professional good in like yes, weeks. Yes, but it also shows if you have a, a vocal coach and a songwriting mm-hmm. coach and all these sort of things, if you have access to that, you know, you can really good things can sort of happen in a short period of time. So, how long were you actually on the show? Um, I was, well, I, I went to the uh, first audition in October, and then in December I went to Hollywood Week, and I made it to the duet round, and that's uh, when I got eliminated in the duet round. But you weren't sad. No. You uh, got a record deal, right? Yes, ma'am. I was, well, I was a little upset that's when I first fair. got eliminated. You're a competitor. You know, I was, you know, because I met some really nice friends there, and, you know, people that, um, you know, not many musicians from where I'm from, 
some people that you know I had interest with, who shared songs and ideas and you know stories about what we had uh, accomplished as musicians or what we had done with it. And uh, you know that was probably the best part about it is meeting the other contestants and really bonding with them. Are any of your fast friends still on the show? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Tristan Gresset, who is killing it right now, he is just um, performing unbelievably. Uh, um, I'm kept in contact with him. Uh, Emerson Flora, she's a really good representation of well, the talent there. Um, just the the way she like carries herself as a musician is unbelievable. And uh, Cameron Whitcomb, I, I'm not sure if he still owned it or not, but we played, we sang a few songs together in Austin in the whole room, just messing around with it. And uh, Fritz Hager, uh, some of the originals he showed me were, oh my gosh, they, made, they almost made me cry. Some of his original songs were so emotional and just, he's so attached to his music, it's just unreal. So now you're living in an unreal kind of world. You yes, are 17. You're going to school in Natchez. You're balancing this life now out in Hollywood. Are you still keeping up with, like, schoolwork back here in Mississippi? Or have you now transitioned to, like, homeschooling? How are you How are you juggling this new stage of life? I'm still, I'm still going to school. I'm trying to keep up with it as best as I can. Uh, you know, it slips up uh, every now and then. But I'm trying to do my best uh, to keep everything balanced. But I'm still going to school. What happened next once you found that your time on American Idol came to an end, right? There's a little bit of, obviously, hopefully you had a moment to breathe. Or did you get right into, with your record company, trying to figure out your next phase of your career? So as soon as I came back, um, uh, they have these little levels. I'm sorry. They have these little levels for artists. Um, I think I was on, like, a bi-monthly thing. It was, like, uh, I don't know, some kind of plan. They put you on, and they immediately bumped me up as soon as I left. And then um, soon after that, uh, they were like, we need to get you to Nashville. We're going to record some songs. And I wrote a song about a friend who passed away in a car accident. And then me and uh, Mr. Britton together wrote a song um, about just like a story about a guy who got abandoned. They're both kind of sad songs, but I think they're very good songs. Uh, but he helped me on both of them, really improved them a lot. And I think they're I think they're really really good and I think they're going to be a hallmark. There's a lot of folks who can sing or carry a tune in a bucket. Yes, There's some that can do both, sing and then strung a guitar or play, you know, the piano, but it starts to narrow those that can do all three, which is sing, play an instrument and songwrite. Where did the songwriting come in? At 2, 2 or like 3, <laughs> three and a half? No. Yes, when did you start deciding, you know, you had lyrics of your own to share? Well, I wrote my first song, uh my, like my first first like full song after I got back from American Idol, so it wasn't that long ago. But uh, you know, songwriting is very difficult. Uh, the melodies can come easy sometimes, but the lyrics are really hard to come up with because you have to. I mean, it's not just like you can just throw something on a sheet of paper. You have to really think and. Because if they don't... You're can, 17. You haven't lived not, through anything traumatic. Well, I mean, I'm not, that's, that's not fair. I mean, there's people who, uh, of all different life walks by the time you're 17. But I'm sitting here thinking, you know, some of those those greats, it's because, you know, there's there's um, uh, just the wisdom and sort of the, you mm-hmm. know, that all that comes with your ears. But at the same time, you have, you have your own way of seeing things. I, I love the idea of your original that you did in your audition that the, about the bridge of your, your two home states, really. You yes, live in ma'am. Louisiana, but you spend time in school over in Mississippi. So I, I retract that other than I'm sitting here thinking, you haven't lived through anything to, <laughs> to be able to, you know, songwrite. Wait till you're a parent and married for 20 years. Then you're going to have <laughs> then you're going to have some good stuff. But but who influences or who would you say are your um, singing, songwriting sort of uh, inspiration or idols uh, growing up? Ronnie Van Zant of Leonard Skinner. Uh, you know, there's stories about him where he wouldn't write anything on a piece of paper because he figured, you know, if it's not good enough to remember there's not worth remembering just um you know you can listen to all of their songs and all of them can just touch you um musically and just everything that he's written i love all their songs uh, leonard skinner that's my favorite band but um another songwriter would probably be tyler childers some of the songs he's written he's a newer country artist i've been listening to him a lot um some of the songs he's written his his uh, lyrics are unmatched i think he's the best songwriter out right now when you go to tell someone your, I guess, elevator pitch on what Bryce McLaughlin, what genre you fit in, mm-hmm. like how do you how do you describe your sound? Um, I really don't know yet. I I kind of was leaning on the southern rock thing a lot while I was on American Idol, and you know that's what I've been, you know, born and raised with is the southern rock thing and the blues and the country. But I really don't know where I fit in. And I can't really tell if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It could be bad. It could be good. But I really don't know. 
That's like asking a 17-year-old what they want to be when they grow up. They don't know yet. Well, you do. You've known since you were you were like two, which still I can't wrap my brain around the fact that you, American Idol is actually older than you are, Bryce. But it's definitely giving you that spring boy that you needed. And you guys stay tuned to Good Things because we're going to get Bryce to play and sing for us a little bit coming up next. There's a lot of good things to do in Mississippi, so go to visitmississippi.org to find out more. You can listen to good things on supertalk.fm at the Supertalk Mississippi app, but the best way to listen to the show each day is always on your local Supertalk Mississippi radio station, which you can get anywhere across the state. We hope you head on over to supertalktv.com and you can watch what's happening here in the studio. I've got with me American Idol contestant of season 20, Bryce McLaughlin. He's from Valdelia. But he attends school in Natchez. What school do you go to? Cathedral. And he's a musician, singer, songwriter extraordinaire. And I asked you to bring your guitar. Does your guitar have a name? Uh, I guess you can call it. Uh, you can say no. Uh, it's just blue. It's just blue. Well, I like it. It's it's an, it's an untraditional uh, color yes, for a guitar. You. Sometimes folks decide to name their <laughs> instruments, some not. Um, but I asked you to bring it because I know that's part of, of your talent. We love for you to share that a little bit on good things. So set the stage for us. What are we about to hear from you? Um, this is a song um, that I learned not that long ago. It's called If It Hadn't Been For Love by the Steel Drivers. All righty. Well, here you go, Bryce McLaughlin. <laughs> Never would have hitchhiked to Birmingham if it hadn't been for love. Never would have caught the train to Louisiana if it hadn't been for love. Never would have run through the blinding rain without one dollar to my name if it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. Never would have seen the trouble that I'm in if it hadn't been for love. Would have been gone like a wayward winner if it hadn't been for love. Never loaded up a 44, put myself behind a jailhouse door if it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. Four calls against my will, at least I know she's lying still. Against my will, at least I know she's lying still. For calls without parole, Lord have mercy on my soul. If you're just tuning in, you are listening to Good Things, but that was Bryce McGlothen. He is a singer-songwriter out of Natchez slash Vidalia. You can find him online where? Um, at Bryce McGlothen Music on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can, I can now see why, Bryce, when the judges on American Idol said, what an expected that to come out of your <laughs> mouth. I mean, right? Like, because you're 17 years old, that sounded like yes, a very mature sound. But, but yeah, I can see where you feel like you would be a little Southern rock or going yes, through the ma'am. country or whatever would be your genre. And you're going to continue to sort of figure that out yes, ma'am. Um, as you go. But if folks are, have enjoyed hearing your story and want to see you, where are you mm-hmm. going to be? I know um, you've got some spots in Natchez. So on April 30th, there will be a Natchez bicycle classic let me make sure real quick um there's going to be uh, something called the natchez bicycle classic on april 30th from 11 to 1 30 um me and my bandmate tyler Gregg, as i mentioned earlier we'll be playing there and then that night at smoot's uh grocery it's actually a bar in natchez uh very well known uh little do they card little, you uh probably they don't card they don't, they don't, they don't card me uh, yes, ma'am. They, but, know, they can see you you're on stage <laughs> yes ma'am but um from 7 to 11 we're playing there um that's gonna be you know one of the more upbeat shows um and then on uh, sunday on may 1st um we're playing at the Nash's brewing company which is uh, a company that yeah it's just <laughs> it's just a company uh we're gonna have a little jam session with me tyler Gregg, uh matt torchitz and uh Justin Lewis. And then on May 6th, we're going to have a really big production show, full band, everything, um, 6 through 9 at the Faraday Delta Music Museum at the um, Arcade. And um, yeah, tickets are online. Uh, they'll have 
food and drinks. You can you know buy anything there. Um, that's going to be a really big production show. That should be one of our uh, better shows, a big show. So. If y'all want to, come out to that and enjoy some enjoy some music. And if they didn't have a chance to write that down, Bryce, they can find all that over on your yes, social on my, media. On my website, too, uh, www.brycemclaughlin.com. And you also mentioned you have some music dropping soon. Uh, yes, ma'am. On uh, May 20th uh, is our scheduled date. Should be uh, That should be when we're releasing it on Spotify, Apple Music, you know, Amazon. Um, we've got a single EP coming out. Should be uh, Should be great. You mentioned you started singing it too. A couple of years ago, you got serious about guitar and I guess your potential career. Did you think it would happen this quick? Um, if you would have asked me a year ago if all this would happen, then I wouldn't believe you at, at all because, you know, just it would happen so fast. Excuse me, but uh, it happened, you know, so fast, and I just wouldn't have ever thought this would have happened. I read where part of the industry or the music industry is one of the toughest industries of all, or I guess entertainment in general. And it's one thing to be a good singer, a good songwriter, but it's another thing to navigate this business. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about approaching that? I mean, you're 17, and it can be a dog eat dog world. I mean, are you ready for it? Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, well. I'm not really sure if I'm ready for it yet. I'm hoping I am. Uh, I'm obviously hoping I am. I'm going to try to prepare myself as well as I can. But, uh, you know, when it comes to the to the hardships of the music industry, I'm not really, haven't really, uh, you know, experienced the worst of it yet. But I'm hoping when I do that I'm going to be able to tough through it. Is there a plan B? Um, At this point, not really. This is really what I want to do. This is what's going to make me happiest in life, and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So here's the mother in me. You're 17. You're a junior in high school. You better walk across that stage and get your diploma because nobody Um, can take your education (laughs) away from you. I am planning on graduating high school. Um, That's one thing I'm going to do. And if I do go to college, um, I was thinking about attending Ole Miss. Um, You know, if backup plan has to happen, um, I was thinking about going to law school. Well, that's a heck of a backup plan. Yes, ma'am. I, but you know what, Bryce, with someone who can get uh, serious about singing and a career at such a, or, and get focused at a young age, I'm pretty sure the sky is the limit for oh. you on wherever you um, necessarily want to want to go. And you can go anywhere. I think that you so big dreams. Like if you, what is when Bryce McLaughlin thinks I want to see my name in lights? I mean, you've already been on American Idol. That's pretty big. Yes, but when we think of stages to stand on, places to sing uh, shows to sell out do you have like bucket list yes ma'am places um, i want to play in a different country or on a different continent that's one of them and um one another stage i want to play on is i want to sell out that'll be my music my musical accomplishment is to sell out madison square garden in New York. all right well you can come back home to the brandon amphitheater that's right <laughs> down the road for many of us here yes, in ma'am. mississippi and i don't know if we'll make it out to madison square garden but i feel like that's probably definitely potential in in your uh future for for sure you know though we've got good friends at ole miss and i'm sure they'd always like to have yes, you ma'am. um there as well we like to hear that Either way, Mississippi's going to keep a little bit of Bryce McLaughlin in yes, in ma'am. their in their time. So I always like to ask artists, what's on your playlist? So if we were to pull out your Spotify, your whatever, like right now, what are you listening I'll pull to, that up to you, for you right now? Whenever you're not listening to yourself. Um, lately, um, I've been kind of listening to some Nirvana. Their Nevermind album. Talk about somebody yes, not ma'am. alive when you were born. <laughs> Before you were uh, born. But, you know, Nirvana, uh, Leonard Skinner's always on there. I'm always adding one of their songs to my playlist. Uh, Morgan Wallen and uh, some Tyler Childers. Um, there's also a band from Natchez uh, called Bishop Gunn, and they were they were headed headed. They broke up a little while ago, and uh, they had it headed their way. They were playing in Europe. They played with Slash. They opened up for the Rolling Stones. Um, but, you know, they just kind of uh, fell apart a little bit. But uh, their music's still... Still up, and I listen to it almost every day. You mentioned your bandmate. What's his name? Yeah, Tyler Gregg. He's actually uh, he's been accepted to Belmont University. He's going there in the fall. He's a senior, so he'll be graduating this year. So he got accepted to Belmont University for a guitar playing. So how did you guys meet? Uh, we go to the same school, but um, it was kind of a talent show in seventh grade. I didn't really know he could play, and he didn't really know I could sing. So after that, you know, we kind of met up, and you know, we're like, you know, let's start a band. And right now, it's just me and him. But on the uh, May 6th show, as I mentioned before, we'll have a drummer, um, Mr. Priester Byrne, who's going to be playing with us. And um, that should be a really big production show. That should be a fun one. So you mentioned your dad was your first inspiration. Uh, yes, what does ma'am. he think about Bryce headed off in his own career? Well, um, my dad uh, my dad is a, he's always going to support me with my music because that's what he loves. And uh, he's had some problems with his voice. He's got uh, vocal cord cancer, so he can't really sing anymore. So I'm sure 
um, watching me sing just kind of, you know, brings the memories back to him. And, you know, just um, watching me play, I'm sure that just warms his heart up. Well, when you get to the big leagues, don't forget the the, the little guys. Yes, and ma'am. so you're welcome back anytime. What yes, was uh, what was Katy Perry and the group like? <laughs> Did you actually get to like, talk to them or anything oh, like yes, that? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's kind of weird. You know, I, I kind of, I was like, when they were critiquing me, I was like, these guys are kind of rude. But, you know, I was just, I was just a... You know, just At least you didn't have kid. Simon Cowell. Yes, ma'am. But I'd I, cry. i cry for people. That was this. just my initial thought, but they were actually really nice in Hollywood Week and everything. Pretty cool. All righty. Yes, ma'am. You guys, uh, website, one more time. Uh, yes, ma'am. www.bricebookoffin.com. All righty. Y'all heard it here first. He was on Good Things when he sells out Madison Square Garden. <laughs> we'll be like, we knew him when.